Creek women's basketball is on the air. Coming to you live from inside Vibrant Arena at the Mark in Moline, Illinois. It's Championship Sunday in the Quad Cities, and the Drake Bulldogs look to punch their ticket to the big dance as they battle the Belmont Bruins. You are so prepared. You are so ready for this moment. You go out, you warm up, you have some fun. Yeah. edition, Drake and Belmont teeing it up for the third time this season. When you think about the regular season, a little bit of time for Belmont. They had to adjust. Judy Jones, one of the blue players on this team, also lost the regular season right about the same time the season under back got eight games in this season and we're going to provide as technical on their respective teams and it took some time for both of these squads to figure out how are they going to adjust, what role are they going to have, and who is going to be where, and he feels like they're playing a much better system now than what they were playing with the final season. 83-77, it's really hard to believe. So first two meetings, these two terrific programs that played each other. Take a look at today's starting lineups for the kitchen of Grinnell, Mutual Insurance. Now that she's back into the starting of 16. I don't know she's back. the first three from Belmont as we apologize for the audio issues here in the Quad Cities Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Championship here at Vibrant Arena at the mark Drake and Belmont and Anna Miller the sixth player of the year and defensive player of the year gets two for Drake as the Bulldogs have the early lead here in Moline Illinois Bulldogs really want to try to concentrate getting the ball down low establish that game around the block and that was a really nice setup with McCauley up top being able to get the defense out of position and finding Miller down low Miller running the floor and getting another lay in and if you remember several years ago there was a player for Drake Sarah Ryan who used she was a big and she'd get out and she would run the floor Anna Miller is starting to remind me a lot of Sarah Ryan and what she can do as soon as that ball comes off the rim. She is sprinting and filling the middle floor of the floor. Travel on Destiny Wells. Just underway. It's Championship Sunday in the Missouri Valley Conference. Drake and Belmont trying to punch that automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. 16 straight wins after their victory yesterday, Laura Leonard, against the Northern Iowa Panthers. They've gone 16-0, and and during that run, Bartley is averaging 18 points a game, five rebounds. Drake right now on a 4 nothing run. A couple of trends to watch right now, at least early on. Eight of the 10 points scored for Drake have come in the paints. We just showed you the highlights of three-point <laughs> shooting yesterday. 
Well, that, that tells you that Drake has pretty good balance, that they can shoot it from the outside, they can get it on the inside. They really want to establish down low first before they get that three-point shooting game going. And in that first game, these two met up in early January. Bulldogs shot 38 threes in that game, connected on 14 of them. And so that just tells you, I think Drake, you know, looked at the scouting report. They figured, okay, this is our best way to beat Belmont. We're going to shoot the three, and you're getting a look at it, the two, the two games between Drake and Belmont. So... Bulldogs were able to get 19 offensive rebounds in that second game. So they kind of established the game in the paint in the middle. Got 31 second chance points off those offensive rebounds. So Bulldogs can throw it at you a couple of different ways. Dustin Wells taking a seat on the Belmont bench. He has yet to score 0 for 1 from the field. That's it. After scoring 62 so far in the tournament. Nice pass. Miller finds Bartley for the easy two. Now Genevieve on the kick out. Geldner for three. And we'll go back the other way. There you see the record for Bart Brooks in his sixth season. 21 seasons, eight straight years for the Bruins basketball program. Well, and when they get into the title game under Bart Brooks, they are 4-0 and in conference championship games. So he's got a pretty good track record when he gets his team to this point. Allison Pullman, second year as the head coach at Drake. She has been at Drake as an assistant starting in 2006. And after Jenny Baranchek took things over in Norman, Oklahoma, Holman got the opportunity and has pretty much picked up right where Jenny left off with this Drake program. Yeah, we touched on it a little yesterday that uh, Jenny Bronchek brought in a, a system and and I think Allison has taken that system and tweaked it a little bit and dropped in a few wrinkles of her own and this team plays it very well. It's high, up-tempo, a lot of movement, a lot of cuts and they say it's positionless basketball. Not a lot of these players have positions. They just keep moving and running and cutting and looking for the open spot. And that's part of the reason that they're second in the country in assists because they do a good job of finding each other. Three is dropped down by Grace Bird. Six-point lead for the Bulldogs as we touch... On one minute left in the opening quarter, Denebeer with the steal. Denebeer will head to the line. Denebeer just a sophomore from West Des Moines. It starts with Sports Center at 6 Eastern. It goes all the way to Bracketology Field of 136. Wells, Heidi Miller. There's Cheeseman there. Wells, wide open look for three. She's on the board. She just never moved. She waited to see what the defense was going to do. Once she couldn't any, make anything happen off the bounce, she got the ball moving and rotated it around. They got it back to her after a couple of passes. Defense didn't get out to challenge. Drake's looking to see if they can extend this lead after the opening 10 minutes. Belmont wanted a foul call, and McCauley hits it at the buzzer. What a finish. What a wild finish. McCauley able to get one off before the buzzer sounds. Off-balance runner. Taylor McCauley, the junior from Lynn Lakes, Minnesota, at the buzzer and extends the Bulldogs' lead to seven. And Chancellors did a great job of identifying institutions who could come in, understood our culture, had the same type of commitment to student-athlete excellence that we have. And the addition of UIC, Murray State, and Belmont have been fantastic, and they've come in, and the conference has been enhanced, and nobody's missed a beat. So we're extremely appreciative of them choosing to join us, and uh, our student-athletes are having a better experience. You know, with 
adding those teams to this league, we've had to adjust the schedule and, and not be able to play that round robin. What are your thoughts on the 20 game schedule here uh, this season for the women? Well, I've apologized to all of the coaches <laughs> on the men and the women's side. Many of them felt that 10 would have been plenty. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a gauntlet to uh, get through the Missouri Valley, and it, and it was prior, but again, because of the quality of the institutions we've uh, added, it's about time in many ways. I think it's just something that was in many ways underviewed. Um, I think our broadcast partners are understanding the value in this sport, and it's one of the reasons why I think our presidents and chancellors have made such a commitment to the success of women's basketball. Well, I tell you what, there's a lot of conversation about not playing on Thursday now. Oh, you know, yeah. there, there, there's yeah. a lot of that because there's a huge difference. I think we probably saw that uh, on the men's side when Indiana State had to play Belmont, and we probably saw that here uh, on the women's side um, it, 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 when, when we had four and five having to play each other with five having to get the day before. It, it's not an easy task, and, you know, playing a conventional slate is what we should be doing. Everybody has a chance to know that they're going to be involved in the championship, and it just creates a kind of another touch point in terms of people, you know, shooting for a target. We also had, of course, celebrating 50 years of Title IX. And we did this last week on the men's side, did it again this week where we had an incredible panel, Kathy Boswell, one of the all-time great players in Missouri Valley Conference history, much less Illinois State, Dr. Curtis from Indiana. Kathy Boswell, an Olympian. Um, one of the great players in the annals of Illinois State women's basketball, and we know how Illinois State has supported women's sports overall. It was just a great event for our young ladies to, uh, one, be acknowledged for the accomplishments that they had this season on and off the court, but also be reminded of history and where they were going. Can you talk about things moving forward, and, and what do you expect out of some of those meetings that uh, you're going to hear back from the coaches? You know, it's interesting, Lord, that you just said that because I was visiting with Scott Corley, the athletic director um, of Belmont, before uh, coming down to watch some of the game. And the last couple of years when we've met in the Missouri Valley, because of membership realignment, um, bylaws and constitution, transformation committee, all the things in the national landscape, we really haven't had the chance to do what I think we're going to do this spring, which has spent a lot of time from a philosophical vantage point about how we want to see things go forward in a way that benefits our student athletes. So kind of anxious. We're actually going to have our meetings this year in Nashville and kind of anxious to get there and be able to talk a little bit more ideologically, a little bit more philosophically about what we need to do to be the best that we can be. It, it's It's... The volleyball, it's the soccer, it's our baseball. Everything in the Valley plays at an exceptional level, and we want to be sure that we're taking advantage and creating those opportunities for our student athletes. Jeff, thank you for coming by. Congratulations Scott, thank you for having me. on all the success and another great weekend from you and your staff. I know Kirsten did an exceptional job. Staff this weekend. is fantastic. Awesome. Can't be more fortunate than all to have this group long. that we have working with us. It was fun. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Foul is called offensive on Grace Berg. So the lead is now down to seven. They are in every game, especially because you have somebody like Destiny Wells that's bringing the ball down the floor. Destiny for three. She is, uh, Jeff, she is good. <laughs> that's, our... <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> We've seen her put it on the floor. We've seen her hit the three, go in the contact just like that. And she just knocks them down. Yeah, please. When you think about, we always talk about non-conference schedules. I mean, Belmont literally had a gauntlet to go through. And I even talked to Coach Brooks about it. He goes, well, maybe it was a little more tougher than I really realized. But, of course, when you lose someone, like you mentioned, Judy Jones, 
That changed the whole trajectory of this basketball team, as talented as they are. Harvey with time running down, and his shot is blocked. Drake on a run out. Dinebeer. Well, you have two of the premier shot blockers in the valley, and Miller and Bear in the middle, and so you have to be really strong when you take that ball inside. Miller with a great pass, and another block for Drake. Bodies flying everywhere. Talked about the Bulldogs being so good in the middle, especially Anna Miller, who has had, coming into this ballgame, 71 blocks. Number two in the Valley. She's number 13 in the country in block shots. Seven blocks already for the Bulldogs. Bear drops a three. Back to a double-digit lead for the Bulldogs at 35-24. You know, over the last six games, Maggie Bear has started shooting it from the outside, not just going block to block. She's shooting 57% from beyond the arc over the last six games. Now Bear on the inside is fouled, and she'll head to the free throw line. Just four weeks left in the regular season. Again, that's 9 Eastern. Knicks and Lakers on ESPN. You know, just... Keep her moving, get her the ball. Wells, much needed buckets. Becker with the left hand. Wells has time. Destiny heaves it up at the buzzer. No. Well, and Bear is on pace to be the first player since Brianna Stewart from UConn to average at least 16 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block while shooting better than 42% from 3 point on 60 or more attempts. And they go inside again. Grace Berg gives Drake their 20th point in the paint. The other thing is 12 fast break points in the opening 20 minutes as Drake Bill like to push the ball too especially with Katie Binnebeer working things at the point. They will push when they need to push and when they feel they have the numbers. We saw one early on where Anna Miller got out and ran the lane and they got the run out that way but if Binnebeer feels like they have the numbers or the angles she is going to push tempo. Picking up man to man. Trying to get that high screen for Denebeer. Bear with the head pick. Little drive, little strong rebound, and the putback by Anna Miller. Gave that little ball fake, got the defense out of position, a little too strong off the glass, but weak side boards for Anna Miller, crashing hard. Tessa Miller hits her first mid range jumper. That's where Miller is so good. She's just been there all weekend long, hanging around that free throw line. Hits that shot at a pretty high rate. There with a difficult shot there. Terrific defense by Miller. And now Destiny Wells. Bulldogs have not really allowed her to turn the corner and get downhill. Back things in with that zone defense. To just over a half a play now. Wells hits the three or third of the afternoon with time winding down on the shot clock. I just like the fact that she does not panic. She looked at Bartley and says, give me a screen, I'm going to knock down the three, but then Maggie Bear comes back down, toes it. Time winding down, and the foul's going to be on Anna Miller. A couple of dribbles to her right. Pulls it up, knocks down the jumper, and then Bear trailing on the play. Stays at the top of the key to get the answer. Miller with a head fake. Really nice. It was a great entry pass into Miller. Gave the head fake and got Bear out of position. She's capable of having a big game. She's got three double-doubles. Didn't get any bench help at all. Yesterday, much more bench help thanks to Hart and Parcel of Courtney Becker. She does it again here on Championship Sunday. 
Yeah, you know, they really struggled in that quarterfinal game because they did not get much bench production. But yesterday, the bench was huge and helped them in that win against Illinois State here today, coming up big. Bulldogs work the, the ball around. They work it inside, swing it back out. Get the big bucket from Denebeer. And Coach Bart Brooks says, we've got to talk. 51-33 as we're near the midway mark of this third quarter. Straight shot over 50% in the opening half. And they've gone five of seven, Laura, to begin things in this third quarter of play. Yeah, and that's part of the reason you need the timeout to talk about some things and get the team refocused and settled back in. And that's who you go to to try to get your team back on track. Destiny Wells is going to need a couple of other teammates to step up and help her down the stretch here. There be a forced up a three. Boy, every time Wells tries to make that move inside, one or two players right there to shut her down. And I was just thinking, you know, a player that needs to step up, Kylan McGuff, and she did. There tries to get the answer. That's one of the few times where Drake hasn't had an answer after three make by Belmont. McGuff from both the left and now the right side. And Allison Pullman wants to slow her down right now as the lead dwindles down to 10. They're never out of a ball game. I mean, that again, that, that was in about a minute that they scored those eight points. So they're never out of a ball game. Drake kind of went away from the game plan the last couple of possessions. Shot a couple of threes that maybe they could have worked the offense a little bit more. And worked the clock. And worked the clock a little bit. And the clock is winding down. Denebeer with the left hand. You need somebody on the team to put it on the floor and get to the rim. You get it into their hands. Harvey has that one blocked. Taylor McCauley with the long arms gets a piece of that one. Berg spots up for three. You know, it's a good look, and we talked about this during the break. Maybe want to work the offense a little bit more. Bear and Berg as the two-headed monster, if you will, scoring-wise for Drake, but Denebeer's been right there with those two young ladies all weekend long. Break up to the glass by Becker. That's a... Nice set play. McGuff, three in a row. Yeah, McGuff is starting to heat up. Her dad is probably watching this ball game. He's the head coach at Ohio State. Put it on the floor, and Miller rotates over and picks up the foul. That's the third foul on Miller. Anna Miller completes the three-point play. She's trying to angle to get something, looking for a screen so she could get open. And a travel. She was trying to dump it inside, but the long arms of the defense for the Bulldogs didn't give her a clear look. Maggie Bear with the left hand. And they're no stranger to being in a title game. They did really well last year, made it sweet 16. McGuff misses both free throws. McGuff 0 for 4 from the free throw line, but she's hit three threes in this third quarter. Hawthorne, the freshman, gets on the scoreboard. Miller in the paint, finds Wells. Wells oh, hits the three. Becker with the kick out. Geldner. They sat, they waited, they ran the play inside out to Geldner, who's been quiet here. Wells tries the answer and does oh. at the buzzer. Final 10 minutes here at Moline. Laura Leonard, Scott Warman, and our entire crew. Great to have you alongside Championship Sunday in the Valley. Destiny Wells trying to will the Bruins to their first Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship. 
and they have trailed this entire contest. Well, she's done her best trying to keep them in it, has started to get a little help from her teammates. Going to have to have them step up, give her a little more help here in the fourth quarter. Wells already the 20-point plateau. That's the 14th 20-plus scoring game she's had this season. Just 34 and 28 the previous two days. Just another day at the office for her. <laughs> Berg spots up. Bulldogs now seven three-pointers here in this ball game and go along with the 10 they had yesterday. They're getting that good balance. They've got 34 points in the paint, so inside, outside makes them very tough to defend. Belmont has hit their last five shots. Wells off the glass. That Maybe one of the very few times Destiny Wills has had an opportunity to go right to the rim just like Denebeer did there. He has that opportunity throughout a 40-minute game. They really kept her on the perimeter. She's been Bartley posting up against Bear. Bartley with the left hand. And the lead is down to 16. Hartley doing a good job of just backing down there. Just kept that dribble alive, a little step in and back over the right shoulder. What a shot by Bird. They're getting them that screen high and letting them drive to the left side. Bird gets the rebound. She's got the speed to get by you. Denevere posting up and hits. The floor hard. Drake already has four players in double figures. And oh, by the way, Drake just missed their first free throw. They have been 13 for the last 13, and they just missed one. Our ESPN Sunday NBA matchup has AD and the Lakers hosting Julius Randle and the Knicks. Coverage tips at 6, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. The Knicks are fifth in the East, and Lakers ninth in the West, which is four weeks left in the regular season. Lakers, Knicks, NBA Sunday on ESPN. Oh, Miller wide open. She's been trying to get the block did, but Miller was just adamant on getting those two points. Yeah, she stayed right with it, but you, know, you got to like what Denebeer did. She pushed tempo, really working hard to keep them in front. Willing to give up that shot more often than not, she's going to knock it down. Belmont's going to have to continue with that full court pressure, and Dinnerbeer was lucky to get through that on that first time they saw the full court. Bulldogs finding the range from distance in this second half. McGuff can't answer, one and done on the possession. You know, I don't mind that shot, though, from Miguel. I mean, you've got to get some points, and if you have the open look, she's knocked down some here in the second half. Go ahead and shoot it, but you got to crash the boards. Good steal by McGuff. And she'll head to the line with 4.51 remaining. Pretty good year in the classroom as well as on the court. Guff hits the first two free throws for Belmont today. Two of six. Yeah, Pulls they up. have not gotten there at all. Full court pressure broken. And there's Miller. Got it over the top and then filling the lanes. Wells, tough shot. Bear is there. Hits the deck. And Drake keeps it. You just wonder, after the performance they had yesterday and the way they shot the basketball, you wonder, okay, how long can they keep that up? Because you figure shooting percentages will catch up. Katie Denebeer is almost automatic at the free throw line. She had made 36 straight until she missed the only free throw that Drake has missed today. Well, of those 16, now 17 attempts, she has been 
to the line the most, 14 times for the Bulldogs. Miller kicks it out. Harvey. Miller blocked by Bear. Well, it was interesting that they win the quarterfinals. Drake does the fourth seed against fifth seed Lady Bears, two of the most winningest women's basketball programs in Valley history. And it was a three-point game. I mean, that was a dogfight. That was the only win Drake has had this season by single digits. 20 of 21 games of their wins have come by 12 points or more, with the exception being that Missouri State game. Wells from nearly half court. Well, she's put on a performance here. This will be the 18th free throw attempt, only six for Bart Brooks's Belmont Bruins. And, and, and part of that is because they have not allowed that dribble drive. Belmont has not been able to get inside and draw the contact and get to the free throw line. 91 points this weekend for this lady. And make it 93. The record is 103 points scored in a Missouri Valley Conference tournament weekend. That was back in 2000. Some lady by the name of Jackie Stiles. Hmm. I think there's a trophy named after her. <laughs> there is. <laughs> the best of the best ever. Denebeer. Another assist to Grace Bird. And it just does not stop. They just continue to move and cut back door. And Denebeer now with nine assists. Make it 94 on the weekend for Destiny Wells as Bart Brooks burns his last time dancing to the NCAA tournament with this impressive win against Belmont here this afternoon. That's kind of been the story of the day for Belmont. You get the breakaway, can't convert it. Wichita State was the last team to have tournament champions on the men's and women's side back in 2014. to believe there's going to be a big watch party over at Drake University for both their men's and women's teams. Drake will be on a season high, five straight wins heading into the big dance. They'll find out later on tonight where they are headed to in the NCAA tournament. McGuff with the left hand. McGuff really with a nice ball game here. Knocked down several threes did her best to try to keep her team in this ballgame. 